Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at an example of an eclipsing binary star system. In this particular star system, there are two stars, a K2-4 subgiant and a B8-5 blue giant. Now notice the subgiant is larger in size, but the blue giant will give off a lot more light. And also notice that when you see the red subgiant next to the blue giant, that there is a a portion of the star that's gravitational being pulled towards the blue giant. So when we have this aspect of the binary star system, we see a larger surface area of the subgiant, which will show up in the density curves, the light density curves. And then in this case, of course, we have the blue giant in front of the red giant behind it. So if we now look at the curves, can we make sense of what we see? Here we have situation one, two, and three, which are denoted here on the graph 1, 2, and 3. Notice in section 1, when the red subgiant primarily covers up a large portion of the blue giant, we see a very large depression of the density, the flux density curve, is because the blue giant contributes most of the light from the star system. When in condition 3 or state 3 here, we have the blue giant in front of the red giant, Notice there's not a lot of diminishing of the light coming from the star system since the red subgiant does not give much of the light of the star system. When we analyze the light, we see something very strange here. Notice on the curve here, instead of having it flat, it kind of has a slight curve to it. That curve comes from the aspect as we see more and more the bulge of the subgiant, we see a larger surface area and so therefore a slightly greater contribution of light coming from that star. Also notice when we look at the various bands, we have the 1.6 micrometer band, the V band, the V narrow band, and the B band. Notice when we look at the 1.6 micrometer band, that's in the infrared, we have a proportionally large dip in the curve because a lot of that of 1.6 micrometer light comes from the red subgiant and proportionally to the blue giant, you can see that there's a, a big diminishing, relatively speaking. But when we look at the B-band, which is a very uh, small wavelength in the visible light, so that's to the blue, the purple color of the light, we can see that there's only a very tiny diminishing of the intensity from the subgiant because the subgiant does not give off a lot of ultraviolet light and not as much blue light in comparison to the blue giant, of course, which has a big diminishing of the flux density of the light when it's being covered by the red giant over here. So you can see that when you look at the various bands, you can see when the red subgiant uh, is diminishing in light intensity and when the blue giant has diminished in light intensity when one star is in front of the other. So you can see that when we analyze the light coming from the two stars in the various wavelengths, you can really get a sense of what we're looking at and you can then make the connection between the light curves that we see in the binary star system and the way the actual star system looks. So there's a nice example to see how nice we can use those light curves to determine the exact situation we're dealing with. And that's how it's done.